It's Potter Month on Movie Feuds. Four weeks of wand splitting action. To celebrate, I'm giving away the entire franchise on Blu-ray. So stick around for the end of the video to find out the information or check out the description on YouTube for the details. I'm starting this one proper though. It's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone versus Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Let's get started. There's plenty of over-the-top acting and hammy delivery, but these two films make up for it by bringing the books to life. I also wouldn't trade any of these performances, not even for the finest batch of butterbeer created. Our entire cast was perfectly selected, from Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter to Rupert Grint as Ron Weasley. Then there's little Hermione Granger, overpronouncing every line given to her, but adorable nevertheless. Emma Watson has come a long way since these first two films and is one of the major highlights of the series. Maggie Smith is exactly what I pictured Professor Minerva McGonagall to look and sound like. Then there's the superior casting of Alan Rickman as Severus Snape. Every line takes an eternity to say. Hagrid, the entire Dursley family, Grip Hook, the Weasley clan, all of them, the whole lot of them. Amazing casting choices. The weakest of the bunch would have to be Richard Harris as Dumbledore. Richard Harris is a brilliant actor and he was a great choice, but the guy was just too old by the time these films came out. And unfortunately he died shortly after number two. But I'm not discrediting this guy. He was amazing in Unforgiven, The Count of Monte Cristo, and Gladiator. The villains are spot on as well, such as Draco Malfoy, played by Tom Felton. So what separates these two? Let's talk about the differences. Well, for starters, we have annoying Mona Myrtle in part two. Then there's Dobby the House Elf, one of the first big CGI characters on screen. He was a very poor man's golem at the time this hit theaters, and I recall being pretty annoyed with him overall. As the series progressed though and finished and I saw Dobby's final stand at Malfoy Manor, I can't help but look back and appreciate old Dobby, that little house elf that could. Rest in peace, old friend. You're a free elf now. <laughs> You're a free elf. You're a free elf now. I guess there are a few shining additions to part two, such as Jason Isaac's portrayal of Lucius Malfoy. You can quickly tell where Draco gets his charming personality from. His dad's an ass. Petrificus Totalis. Chris Columbus directed both part one and part two of the Harry Potter saga, and he did a fantastic job. I'm not huge on some of the shots he chooses and that soft focal lens, but he does way more right than he does wrong, and it's a wonderful introduction to this amazing universe. You just can't beat a good origin tale, and the Sorcerer's Stone, or Philosopher's Stone for you purists out there, is a hard one to top. Hugely memorable moments like the Hogwarts Owls berating the Dursley family with school invites, or the first time Harry is introduced to Hagrid on his birthday. Bloody brilliant shots of boats sailing up to the school, looming in the distance, to the rotating stairways, and that moment Harry first got that sorting hat placed on his head and was chosen Gryffindor. Now with all the good there is some bad, and that is CGI. It's rough around the edges, particular during the broom training sequence and the troll attack. The first sequel had plenty of memorable moments as well and takes things in a bit darker route. There's the whole flying car fiasco to the disgusting spider cave, home of the great Aragog. It all kind of falls apart for me though in that final act when Harry fights the basilisk. You're telling me that this ancient giant serpent is defeated by some little kid waving a sword around? It's very far-fetched, even for the Potter universe. The Chamber of Secrets is a cool concept that plays out like a whodunit murder mystery, complete with disguises via polyjuice potion and sketchy characters like the charming Gilderoy Lockhart. But it's definitely the weakest of the franchise, for me personally. Where this first film has a bit more interest in the story department, the sequel jumps ahead when it comes to action and effects. Dobby was an impressive creation alone, but we also get to see a giant basilisk that's very convincing, moving in and out of tunnels and waterways to stalk its prey. It puts that cameo by Nagini to shame in Act 1. Yeah, that was Nagini that falls out of the zoo. That, that was him. That's the guy. We get some fun Quidditch matches in both these movies. Sorcerer's Stone, of course, having the more important scene, 
as the first snitch Harry pops into his mouth is the one he's given in the last installment. The Chamber of Secrets matches this with an exciting ride where we see our new seeker, Draco Malfoy, go broom to broom with Potter, smashing through barriers as they seek their prize. Because they're seekers. Anything is better than that stupid ass chess match from the first film though, right? Right? John Williams is the man to thank for these amazing Harry Potter songs, particularly Hedwig's theme. It's the main score of these films and became an instant classic right out of the gates. The first film runs the gamut with sounds, from the uplifting beats of Diagon Alley to the more intense music during the Face of Voldemort reveal. The same could be said of the sequel, but with even more adventurous tone, especially in the scenes like the Spider Escape or the Dueling Club. I'd rather watch The Prisoner of Azkaban and the films that precede, but these first two aren't exactly for me anymore. I'm not that kid that it's appealing to. I, I lost my magic, I lost my wonder long, long ago. Between these two, I go Sorcerer's Stone all day. It's more nostalgic to me. It's the first time I get to see a lot of these magical places. It's the first time that J.K. Rowling's masterpiece was put to film, and Chris Columbus nails it. Let me hear from you guys now. Vote and comment below with your favorite of the two, and remember I'm doing this all month long. Next week is Azkaban vs. Goblet of Fire, and I promise it won't disappoint. Lastly, I want to talk about the giveaway. All eight films of the Potter series on Blu-ray for one lucky winner. All you have to do, be a subscriber and comment below this video for your chance to win. You actually could get your name put in as many as five times if you play your cards right. Comment on this video, comment on the next one, next one, next one, that's four right there. Then if you tweet it out once, I'll throw you in again. That's five times for your chance to win the Blu-ray. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. We do contests now.